Right, good morning. <sighs> My goodness me, where is it all going? It's Trinity 8, I've got 18 there, but there you go, I'm sure that's a typo. It's definitely Trinity 8, but that's, <laughs> that's my fault. Um, we're back, everything's great, things are changing, watch this space. If you watch Facebook, if you use Facebook, you'll see there are things on already about the changes from tomorrow. Tomorrow, everything is back to normal, whatever normal is for you. There are lots of challenges in the way we do services, in singing with masks off, singing full stop, the way we do communion. Many, many things are going to change. Have a look, if you can, at our Facebook page. That will give you an idea of what's going on. Or, and I will post it, there's a link to the Disaster Recovery Group's latest offerings on what we should and shouldn't do. The key is to come back and worship Christ. The hope is to come back and worship Christ sensibly and safely. Because despite what people think, Christians don't leave their brains at the door when they become Christian. A moment and we will begin. The Lord be with you and, and also with you. And we say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen, Lord have mercy. What God has prepared for those who love him, he has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches everything. Therefore, let us in penitence open our hearts to the Lord who has prepared good things for those who love him. And we say, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Generous God, you give us gifts and make them grow. Though our faith is as small as a mustard seed, make it grow to your glory and the flourishing of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so we come to our first reading, 2 Samuel 7, 1 to 14. The king moved into his palace. The Lord had given him peace and rest from all his enemies around him. Then the king spoke to Nathan the prophet. He said, Here I am, living in a house that has beautiful cedar walls, but the ark of God remains in a tent. Nathan replied to the king, Go ahead and do what you want to. The Lord is with you. But that night the word of the Lord came to Nathan. 
the Lord said, go and speak to my servant David. Tell him, the Lord says, are you the one to build me a house to live in? I brought the Israelites up out of Egypt, but I've not lived in a house from then until now. I have been moving from place to place. I've been living in a tent. I've moved from place to place with all the Israelites. I commanded their rulers to be shepherds over them. I never asked any of those rulers, why haven't you built me a house that has beautiful cedar walls? So tell my servant David, the Lord who rules over all says, I took you away from the grasslands. That's where you were taking care of your father's sheep and goats. I made you ruler over my people Israel. I've been with you everywhere you have gone. I've destroyed all your enemies. Now I will make you famous. Your name will be just as respected as the names of the most important people on earth. I will provide a place where my people Israel can live. I will plant them in the land. Then they will have a good home of their own. They will not be bothered anymore. Evil people will no longer crush them as they did at first. That is what your enemies have done ever since I appointed leaders over my people Israel. But I will give you peace and rest from all of them. I tell you that I, the Lord, will set up a royal house for you. Someday your life will come to an end. You will join the members of your family who have already died. Then I will make one of your own sons the next king after you. And I will make his kingdom secure. He is the one who will build a house where I will put my name. I will set up the throne of the kingdom. It will last forever. I will be his father and he will be my son. When he does what is wrong, I will use other men to beat him with rods and whips. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading is taken from uh, Paul's letter to the Ephesians, um, from chapter 2, verses 11 to 22. Um, You who are not Jews by birth, um, here is what I want you to remember. You are called uncircumcised by those who call themselves circumcised, but they have only been circumcised in their bodies by human hands. Before you believed in Christ, you were separated from him, Um, You were not considered to be uh, citizens of Israel. You were not included in what the covenants promised. You you were without hope and without God in the world. At one time, you were far away from God, but now you belong to, to Christ Jesus. He spilled his blood for you. This has brought you near to God. Christ himself is our peace. He has made Jews and Gentiles into one group of people. Um, He has destroyed the hatred that was like a wall between us. Through his body on the cross, Christ set aside the law with all its commands and rules. He planned to create one new people out of Jews and Gentiles. Is that the... uh So, yeah, is, is that it, or if I touch it, it'll go all the way. Oh, yeah, there's a bit, there's a bit more. Where were, you, where were you up to? Yeah, there. Yeah. yeah, I think that's right. Yeah, thank you, yeah. Sorry? I think that's right. Yeah, the next. Because it's to change. That is. Yeah. Oh, thank you, yeah. The whole building is held together by him. It rises to become a holy temple because it belongs to the Lord. And because you belong to him, you too are being built together. You are being made into a house where God lives through his spirit. Uh, This is the word of the Lord. Thanks 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 be to God. God. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. 
The apostles gathered around Jesus. They told him all they had done and taught. But many people were coming and going, so they did not even have a chance to eat. Then, then Jesus said to his apostles, Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place. You need to get some rest. So they went away by themselves in a boat to a quiet place. But many people who saw them leaving recognised them. They ran from all the towns and got there ahead of them. When Jesus came ashore, he saw a large crowd. He felt deep concern for them. They were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. They went across the lake and landed at Gennesaret. There they tied up the boat. As soon as Jesus and the disciples got out, people recognised him. They ran through that whole area to bring him those who were sick. They carried them on mats to where they heard he was. He went into the villages, the towns and to the countryside. Everywhere he went. The people brought the sick to the market areas. Even those who were sick begged him to let them touch just the edge of his clothes. And all who touched his clothes were healed. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Father, we thank you for your word. Touch us, we pray now, by your spirit. Amen. Well, a topical set of passages today but the bible is always every time topical we are looking at the potential of cutting buildings removing we are the largest operator of listed buildings in the country we are looking at cutting down the money we spend on staffing full stop and you know it's a really great passage to start with there's david just moved into his 26 up, 26 down. And he says, oh, it would be good if God had a place like this too. And Nathan says, do what you like. God's, you know, God's with you, mate. Whatever you do, it can't go wrong. And God turns around and says to Nathan, you what? I don't need a building to reside in. God does not live in a church. This is not. St. Editor's, the Cathedral, Westminster Abbey, and it costs you to get in there, is not a place where God lives. It's a museum where people used to be and are buried still. It's a place where we, who are the curators of a place's memory, keep their memories. But church is the people, not the building. God says, I don't need a building, although your son, a son who will come after you, that's Solomon, will build something, but knock it off. You know, God's been trying to say that to the church for years. People don't worship God, they worship their pile of bricks and the stained glass and the little things with the plaque. You know, you pick up the cross and it says, donated by Sid Smith because now he gets into heaven because he's bought something. They get into heaven by mowing the lawn. I'm married and Wendy does it, so that's okay. The first reading we have says, don't get caught up with God living in a building. Don't get caught up with the physical, but realize God resides in your heart. God resides with you. Oh yeah, says Paul, how right that is. Because there's Jew and Gentile, circumcised and uncircumcised, a local lad and someone who's not. And yet, what's that all about? You're Jew, you're Gentile, you're separate, you're opposed. The Jews look down on the dogs, the Gentiles. And the dogs looked at the Jews and went, yeah, don't like you lot. And Jesus says the cross is the end of all division. The cross of Christ reconciles man and God, humanity and God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Paul saying the same thing today. Forget your differences. Realise that in the cross of Christ, in the resurrection of the God-made flesh, we are one. There is no difference. There is no division. You can be an Anglican. When I grew up, they were called Jerry Cans. The Catholics were called Roman Candles. We had the Bappers. We had the Meths which I thought was great. I thought that's probably what they drank instead of wine because they don't do wine apparently, they do grape juice. I didn't know what when I first found out about Christians. 
All I knew was, look how they loathe each other. Look how different we are. But whether you're near or far, whether you're saved or not, the cross of Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit residing in our heart, which has been mended through the death and resurrection of Christ, is there for all. It's real for all. And so two great things have summed up already. Don't worry about the building and don't worry about the difference. Look at the unity that Christ brings. Look at that wonderful one John passage. Can't love God and hate your brother. Wow. I loved that when I was a student, but I didn't understand it meant me too doing that. So what does it bring us to? The apostles, they go out, they do the stuff, they come back and tell Jesus. And Jesus says, Look, I can't hear you, there's lots going on and you lot need a rest. You know, it's something I get pillaged for a lot because I run around like a loony and I work long hours. Why? Because the bloke I work with does the same. But I do know when to get a rest. I do know how to find time with God. And that's what you need to do. You need first and foremost to tell yourself, I need to rest from doing the stuff I'm doing for the church, for God, for Christ. And then you need to say, and what is it I need to rest from? And the answer for many of us is absolutely nothing. But we need to rest, Sabbath rest is here to take us from the, away from the six days where we've been preaching, living and making the gospel real with the temple that is in us, with the unity that is from the cross of Christ. And I love it, Jesus says, come on guys, let's go for a cruise. All I can imagine is that they must have had a narrow boat lined up because we get in our narrow boat and we can, we can cruise for a whole day and then Somebody picks us up in the car and five minutes later we're back where we left the car. Same thing with Jesus. They turn up, people see them leaving and they go, we know where you're going. There's only one lock. He turns up and they turn up and they've had their rest. He's talked to them, he's taught them, he's refreshed them with the word. The living word refreshes them with the word written on the scrolls. And they go out and they do the stuff again. And when the shadow falls, when they touch the hem, when the presence of God is manifest around the people, they are healed. How many of you, I wonder, watching or here have seen healings? And you probably go, well, not really. But where the word of God is manifest, where the living word of God is manifest, people are healed. Signs and wonders follow the preaching of the word. So first and foremost is the word being preached where you are. Secondly, are you reading the word? Are you feeding on the bread of life? And lastly, which is where it gets a little bit tough really, isn't it? Because hearing and feeding brings signs and wonders. Well, if you're not doing the stuff, and all of you are filled with the Spirit, you can't say Jesus Christ is Lord without the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. If the Spirit resides within you, the outpouring of the Spirit is signs and wonders. Basileia, the kingdom of God is here. Where I am, Jesus is. When I stop people in the street and they go, you look sad. Why are you crying? What can I do? What can I pray for you? Can I help? And they, some of them still look at you like you're mad because they don't know I'm mad. And the ones who have done it to before go, actually, when you prayed, man who delivers food for one of the Chinese in the area. I saw him limping along and he's got policeman's heel. And he said, and it's really awful. I said, right, I'll pray for you. So I prayed for him. I saw him next week outside the shop and I said to him, how are you doing? He said, it's really good. I don't know what's happened, but it's gone. I said, yeah, that's the bloke I work for. How are you making Christ known today? Are you polishing the brass in your church? because that doesn't make him known. Are you inviting people on heritage tours? Great, you're not a Christian, you're a historian. What are you gonna to do today? Where are, you going to, where are you going to put God? Where are you going to put Father, Son and Holy Spirit? Where are you gonna be united with others from if it's not for the blood of Christ shed, the resurrection and the power of the Spirit? 
why aren't you doing the stuff? Because you don't dare do it. You don't venture to do it. And I've been there. First time I prayed for blind people and they saw, all the wheels fell off. I didn't know, didn't know how to do this because I understood the words, get away from me, Lord, I'm a sinful man. Have you found that in your life yet? Have you ventured far enough to put God to the test? For when you do, actually, you won't find him wanting. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for the words this morning that our treasure is not our buildings, as splendid as they are. But Lord, our presence, our treasure, our heart, our love is in the cross of Christ, which unites, which overcomes, which shows grace, which is so inclusive. We say to all, come to church, come as you are. But we should also say, expect to leave different. And if that's true for those we bring, that's true for us. Help us to take your word, to heal the sick, to make your love known in flesh as well as spirit. Help us to bring you into people's presence, that they may know that there is a God in Israel, that they may know that we have a God who hears, who heals. And may that be our prayer for all, that you would be God in their lives and we might be the signpost to that. We ask this, God, Father God, Son, Holy Spirit, that you might touch us and inspire us. Amen. And so let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith, and fills us with his love. We believe in God, the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Father, as we gather in buildings this morning, we pray that our minds and hearts would be open. That as we prepare to cast off restraint and return to life before COVID, we would do it with the correct amount of care and concern, Lord, that we would be diligent in our need to care for others and not just do what we like and what makes us feel good. So Father, we pray for wise leadership, we pray for compassion and care among our congregations. We pray that your church would conduct itself in a way that is loving, caring, and that looks at the needs of those who are local and puts those first rather than just enjoying ourselves. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear yeah. our prayer. And Father, as we do return to our buildings and return to some form of normality, we pray that we would not just rush back to the way things used to be, but we would consider the lessons we have learned. We would consider the things that you have done and what we have learned of you during this pandemic and during this crisis, that you are not a God who is contained within brick walls but you are a God who is live and active in our communities and always have been. And so we would also be live and active in our communities, not just rushing back to our holy huddles, 
not just rushing back into our glorious buildings where we feel safe and secure and where things are as we remember them. But Lord, that we would serve you in all that we do, in all that we say, in all that we are. And that we would do that outside of our buildings much more than inside them, or at least the same. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Father, we pray for our world, for a world that is racked by disaster. We pray for those in Europe who are cleaning up after the recent floods, for those who have lost loved ones, for those who have lost livelihoods. We pray for those parts of the world that are struggling with water shortages, such as Iran, for those who have experienced wildfires and heat waves that have taken life. Lord, may we not be blind to the causes of these disasters and may we take upon ourselves the responsibility to look after your creation. May our leaders and those in business, especially large business, also listen as the super wealthy race to fire themselves into space. Lord, it's easy to wish that they might stay there, but we pray rather that their hearts would be changed and they would use their vast wealth for the use of others, not just for their own entertainment. And Lord, wherever we are, whatever we have, even though we may consider ourselves not to be wealthy, we all have things that we can share. So may we have that heart to share, to look after each other, even perhaps to go without so that someone else can have, because that's your heart and we are your people and we reflect who you are. Lord, in your mercy, hear Amen. our prayer. Father, as we pray for our leaders, we are perhaps aware of the hypocrisy that often shows itself in our leaders. Lord, may we not judge them, but may we pray for them. Pray for them to lead us well. Pray for them to be people of integrity, people that we can, can follow where they lead, because we trust. And Lord, when our leaders are foolish, when they let us down, when we are not fully convinced, may we look beyond them to you. And may we follow you. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah, our Lord. prayer. Father, we pray for our loved ones, for those we know who are struggling at the moment in mind, body or health. We pray particularly for those who may be feeling nervous as our country casts off restraint and returns to normal and masks are thrown away. Lord, we pray for those who are medically vulnerable, but for those who are also emotionally and mentally vulnerable, for those for whom Freedom Day is a day of fear and nervousness, Lord, that we may be able to come alongside them, to reassure them, to help them and to act in a way that is loving. 
and that leads them to a place of peace. Father, we pray for all who are finding that their medical treatment is once again being cancelled because of the rising COVID cases. We pray for those who have recently been through medical intervention, that their recovery would be thorough and complete. We pray for those who are still dealing with the effects of COVID long after the disease has left, but their bodies have not returned to what they once were. Lord, we pray for all who mourn and grieve the loss of physical and mental health for those whose bodies aren't as they once were because of illness or perhaps because of age or injury. Lord, we pray that they would find peace in the new way of life. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. And Father, we pray also for those who grieve the loss of loved ones. Those who remember people who have been <coughs> faithful friends, spouses, family members. Father, we pray for your comfort. We pray for your peace. And Lord, we thank you for the hope of resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Peace to you from God our Heavenly Father. Peace from his Son, Jesus Christ, who is our peace. Peace from the Holy Spirit, the life giver. The peace of the triune God be, all, be with you all and, and also Lord, with Lord. you. Nearly got that wrong. Peace be with you guys. Thanks for being here wherever you are, however you are. <laughs> Ah, and you can see which one's been watching the Winston Churchill films lately. <laughs> Peace be with you, Charles. Peace be with you guys. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. So lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For he is your living word. Through him you've created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born of a woman and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him you've sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us a people for your own possession. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest.
accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ your Son, our Lord. For great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise, blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. And as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared we were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation and share your bread with sins. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, and that we with the whole company of Christ may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. Oh. 
Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son is the true vine and the source of life, ever giving himself that the world may live, may we so receive within ourselves the power of his death and passion, that in his saving cup we may share his glory and be made perfect in his love. For he is alive and reigns now and for ever. Amen. Amen. And we say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and those you love now and always. Amen. Amen. Let's go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, Amen. Thank you for being with us. If there's anything we can do, you know where we are, give us a shout. Have a great week. Bye.